we'll move on. Welcome back after the break. We'll move on to chapter two. Uh, during the break, did any doubt arise? Did you have any questions anyone would like to ask? Regarding chapter one. No? Okay. Okay, then we'll uh, move on to chapter two. Basically, we're going to continue looking at uh, uh, the divinity of Christ, that he is God. And in the first chapter, we established this fact that he is God because he is pre-existent. Um, now, in chapter two, we'll, um, we'll look at uh, that he is God because of his equality with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, so in the earlier chapter, we discussed about the pre-existence of Christ. Now we turn our attention to his equality with God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll be referring to a few uh, scripture passages that present to us this fact. Um, now this truth is very important for us to realize that Christ was indeed God, that he was divine in his nature and not an intermediary or intermediary being between uh, God and man that is of lesser importance to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, but he was, uh, but he is fully God um, and he was fully man when he became man. So let's look at uh, a few scripture references that, uh, you know, show us his the equality between God the Father and God the Holy Spirit and will also establish to us the fact that Jesus Christ is indeed God, okay? Uh, so before looking into his equality with God the Father and God the Son, we will first review a few scripture passages that we have considered so far. Okay, we looked at John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Okay, uh, can somebody read that again, please, for us? John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning. John. Yeah, go ahead, Zio, Zio Tori. Okay, uh, John 1. One to three. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Thank you. So we see, uh, uh, you know, and uh, how John is presenting Jesus Christ, uh, the Logos, as the Word who was in the beginning. That means uh, in the dateless past. And he was with God and was also God. That means he is co-equal with the Father because he is God. He has the same nature, the same essence, the same substance that makes God, God. And we also read this verse in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Can somebody else read it, please? Somebody who's not read so far. Can somebody read Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. Amen. Thank you. We looked at this verse. We talked about the form of God, uh, uh, just talking about the very nature of God, the essence, the attributes of God. And we saw here also, you know, uh, uh, Paul stating that he was, that Jesus Christ was equal uh, with God. And, uh, you know, Jesus was equal with God, but yet he did not think it as something to be held on to, but uh, he gave up his very nature of being God and took on the nature of being man. Now, this uh, uh, scripture portion is very, very important for us and we we'll look at it in detail uh, in another chapter where we're, we're, when we're talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ. But for now, we'll just see that, you know, him being equal with God uh, means that he also shared in the glory of the deity. That means he also shared in the glory of the divinity, which means or proves that Jesus is God. Okay. Can somebody else read John chapter 8, verse 58? Uh, 
It's on your screen. John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Okay, thank you. And then you can also read, uh, Reuben, can you also read Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, please? Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Thank you, Reuben. So here uh, we already you know, saw these, uh, uh, referred to these two scripture passages uh, in, uh, in lesson one or in chapter one. But here we'll just look at it in a little more detail. The word I am means in Hebrew means to be. Okay, it uh, this this word I am or this name that God attributes to Himself, uh, you know, reveals uh, or He's revealing to mankind by saying that you know by saying that He's I am that He's self-sufficient, He's self-existent, uh, that He's eternal, that He's unchangeable, and uh, you know Jesus also uses this word I am when He refers Himself. To as the I am in John chapter 8, verse 58, and thus Jesus is making himself uh, co-equal with God uh, of uh, the Old Testament, the God of Israel, that is Yahweh or Jehovah or Lord, okay? And why does Jesus use this word I am? Because we know that in uh, Jewish heritage or Jewish uh, culture uh, or Jewish tradition, this word I am was basically attributed or completely attributed to God alone, the God of the Old Testament, Yahweh. Okay, And so by Jesus calling himself or attributing himself to this name, I am, he's telling uh, uh, the Jews, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the priests, all people around him that, uh, you know, that he is God, that he is equal to God the Father, or he is uh, equal to Yahweh or Jehovah or uh, the Lord, okay? Uh, the next uh, reference we see is uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where we, we look at uh, Jesus as uh, the mighty God. So can um, somebody read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6? Somebody else can. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thank you. So here we see that Jesus is ascribed the titles um, Mighty God. Okay, everlasting father um, and uh, the prince of peace. Okay, so here are the two important titles that we'll be looking at. Uh, of course, there are more titles, wonderful counselor. But here are the two important titles that we will be looking at is mighty God and everlasting father. So by attributing these two titles to uh, Jesus Christ, uh, we see that as mighty God, he is the omnipotent one. Omnipotent uh, means all powerful. Omni is translated all. Potent is powerful, that he is the all powerful one. And uh, everlasting father, uh, which is, uh, you know, ascribed to Jesus because, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 just referring to, uh, Jesus as a mighty God and everlasting father that he himself is God, that the child that was born, uh, uh, you know, uh, is therefore God incarnate. Okay, so here Isaiah is, uh, you know, uh, revealing these titles was through divine revelation and by uh, referring uh, to this incarnate one as the mighty God and as the everlasting father, uh, Isaiah is revealing that this child that was to be born or that will be born is therefore God in 
incarnate. Okay, so if you look at this word everlasting father, we might think that it is um, it's something that is in conflict with God the Father. It's a title that is ascribed to Jesus, but it's in conflict with God the Father. It's not in conflict with God the Father. It just basically reveals uh, Jesus' eternal nature and his character as the uh, father just as the father is eternal uh, just as the father has the essence and the substance that makes him god jesus is also having the same nature the same attributes the same essence the same substance that makes him god okay any doubts so far no Okay, we look at another title of uh, Jesus, and that is the Alpha and Omega. So can somebody read that uh, uh, on the screen? Revelation chapter 21, verses 6 and 7, please. Revelation chapter 21, verse 6 and 7. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give us the fountain of the water of life. Pray to him you test. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and shall be my son. Amen. Thank you. So here Jesus is referring uh, himself to uh, or calling himself as the Alpha and Omega. And he's revealing this uh, to John who's writing the book of um, uh, Revelation. Okay. We also see that, um, uh, you know, uh, that the alpha and the omega, the Greek word is first and last. Okay, we also see this word first and last as titles uh, attributed to the God of the Old Testament. Okay, we read this in um, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, and Isaiah chapter 48, uh, verse 12. So, can somebody read Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, please? Thus says thus, the Lord, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Yeah, please read uh, Isaiah 48, verse 12 as well, Rosalind. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he. I am the first, I am also the last. Okay. Thank you. So here we see Yahweh or Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament, referring to himself with the title, the first and the last. And we also see that Jesus refers himself to as the first and the last, that is Alpha and Omega. Uh, and he uses this title for him. Um, self, uh, you know, Alpha and Omega is the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. So if you translate Alpha and Omega, uh, the Old Testament, it the same words first and the last. So we see Yahweh or Jehovah uh, is referred to himself with this title, the first and the last. And we see that Jesus also using this title for him, uh, self. We also read about uh, uh, this in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 and Revelation chapter 22 verse 13 uh, where Jesus is um, referred to or is calling himself as the Alpha and Omega. So can somebody read Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 please? Revelation 1 verse 8 I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. Thank you. Somebody else can read Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Thank you. Okay, so Jesus uses God's title for himself, God's title of first and last, Alpha and Omega. He uses it for himself. So he's therefore no less in power or divinity than the Father. Uh, uh, and... Um, Everything, you know, God is everything from the beginning to the end. So this, this word Alpha and Omega basically declares that God is everything from the beginning to the end. All history originates in him. All history culminates or ends in him. He is the origin and he is the destination. Yes, Lyndon, do you want to say something? You've unmuted your mic. Okay. So 
what does it mean uh, when Jesus attributes himself as uh, the Alpha and the Omega? He's basically giving himself the title of God, uh, that God is referred to as the first and the last, and he's therefore mentioning that he is no less in power and in divinity, okay? And um, it's also declaring that, you know, God is everything from beginning uh, 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 and uh, to the end. All, all of history originates in him and culminates in him, and he's the origin and the destination, Okay. So that is the title, the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, before we move on to the next title, does anyone have any questions, please? Any questions? Any doubts? No? Okay, we move on to the next title, Our Great God. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. So can uh, I'll just put that on the screen. Can somebody read Romans chapter 9, verses 4 and 5, please? Romans chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. Who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, the eternally blessed God. Amen. Yeah. So here we see two important facts about Christ uh, that are contained in Romans chapter 9, verse 5. That Christ is overall, okay, um, in the last phrase you say, who is overall the eternally, God, eternally blessed God. So we see that he is overall, which means he is supreme, he is the master, he is sovereign, and he is Lord. And we also see here that he is eternally blessed God, that Christ is the eternally blessed God, that he is the one who is from eternity to eternity. That means eternity past to eternity future. He's the one who is to receive all honor and blessing and glory. And hence he is God and hence he is co-equal with the Father and the Spirit. Okay, with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. We look at uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Can somebody read that please? Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So here, um, Paul is writing to Titus and he's saying that, uh, you know, he's looking forward to the hope that they have and the glorious reappearing of our Lord and Savior, our God, Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our great God, and there can be no denying to the fact that Jesus is God, that he is deity, that he is divine. Uh, yes, many people question the divinity of Jesus Christ, but uh, from, from scripture, it's clear that Jesus is God. Okay, so through from all these titles uh, that Jesus attributes to himself, uh, which is titles that are attributed to God the Father, to the God of the Old Testament, uh, we can prove that uh, Jesus himself is God, that he is co-equal with God the Father. And we'll just look at um, uh, two scripture verses here. Uh, you know, that talks about his uh, equality with God the Father um, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so can somebody read John chapter 14, verse 7? Can somebody read John chapter 14, verse 7, please? If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. He was yes. now returning to the floor. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so here we see that, you know, Jesus is making a bold statement uh, about 
when he's revealing his father, he says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also from now on, you know him and have seen him. And so uh, how can people say that they have, they know the father and they have seen the father? Jesus is basically saying, because you have seen me and you have known me, by seeing me and knowing me, you also see the Father and know about the Father. And thus he is, uh, you know, uh, 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 attributing or he is uh, showing himself equal to the Father. John chapter 14, verse 28. Can somebody read that, please? John chapter 14, verse 28. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Yes. So here, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is again saying, um, you know, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. Uh, you know, he says, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Okay, so he's talking about uh, his, uh, you know, where he belongs. Uh, he's talking about his... Uh, uh, the, the place that he came from, that he came from the father, that he's going back to the father. And, um, and thus he's revealing himself as, uh, you know, equal with the father or intimate with the father or close to the father and also belonging to the father. Okay. And in John chapter 15, verse 26, uh, can somebody read John chapter 15, verse 26, please? But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Okay, so here we see that the Spirit of God, that is the Holy Spirit, you know, will come from the Father and will reveal Jesus Christ to us. Okay, how can the Holy Spirit reveal uh, Jesus Christ unless the Holy Spirit knows about Jesus Christ? So um, Jesus is here saying that, you know, that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all three God. And, uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, they know each other. They are intimate with each other. They are close with each other. And um, uh, Jesus is saying that whatever I have taught you, whatever I said, told you, you know, the Holy Spirit who will come from the Father uh, will reveal uh, 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 and will help you to understand these truths, will help you to know these truths, and thus, uh, you know, um, uh, will, will testify about Jesus Christ. And hence here we see the equality between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we look at not only just the origin, but we also see the unity um, uh, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, in the way they operate. Okay, so even as they operate, uh, each of them doing their own specific tasks, uh, but we see that they work in perfect unity and they perfect uh, work in perfect oneness. And we also see their origin. Okay, Jesus is saying, I came from the Father, now I'm going back to the Father. Okay, and saying that the Holy Spirit is, uh, he's uh, attributing that the Holy Spirit is also God because the Holy Spirit is going to come from the Father and is also going to testify about uh, Jesus Christ. So here we see uh, the equality in origin and equality in their unity, in the way they work, in the operation of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so in this chapter, we just briefly looked at a few references that we already saw in chapter one, and we looked at a few more references, and we saw the equality with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So anyone has any doubts? No, ma'am. Yes, no? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'll not move into chapter three because it will be too much. I just want you all to uh, spend some time. Uh, I'm just going to give you some time to, uh, you know, read through your notes. And uh, if you have any doubts then or questions, we can take it on. 
Okay, we won't move into chapter three because that will be quite a lot. Uh, we'll do this chapter three and chapter four in the next class. But I'm just doing um, a few chapters, you know, so that uh, you all will have time to go through it. These are very basic, important, foundational truths that are important for you to be established in so that you will be able to teach, you will be able to correct, you will be able to guide and help others. Okay, so I would like you all to take some time now. We just have... Um, uh, at least 15 minutes uh, or more there for the next class. So please take some time to just go through your notes. And if you have any doubts, uh, you could um, ask the questions maybe in the next class or, um, you know, just before we end this class. We'll end it now, but I'll still be uh, in the class. Uh, we'll not exist. I'll not exit from the class, but uh, you all can come back and ask any questions if you all have. Is that fine? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please go through your notes. Uh, it's all there in the content page. Um, I put it up in the teaching notes. You can look through your notes. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask. Okay.